Welcome back to Epic Airsoft HD. This week we have the Yukara Legal G&G Raider L. Okay, we're back with the first two-tone gun that we have reviewed. I know some of you guys have watched this already and you may have been sick a little in your mouth, but this is what we need in the UK if you're going to buy your first airsoft gun if you don't have a Yukara license to skirmish with. So we're going to go and have a look at some of the features of this gun and then I'm going to explain why it's sprayed in this awesome blue camouflage. Alright, g g makes some really high quality guns that we've already seen in the past with quite a lot of reviews of g g actually and this one is no different. This one is the metal version of the Raider that we reviewed before. It's also a nice long barrel on it as well. I, let's have a look at some of the features quickly. Uh, it's got the rear crane stock. This is what takes your battery in here. A crane stock battery in there will fit or even one of the stock tube lipos that we already have here at Epic Airsoft HD. Nice six position adjustable stock. As you can see, increments. We've seen we've all seen a crane stock before. Uh, it's fairly common on M4s, obviously. Uh, you can change this out for whatever stock you want to go for. Magpul, Voltor, you've got plenty of options. And that's a great thing about M4s for a starter gun. Uh, they've opted, g and have opted to put the SCAR sight on the rear, which is pretty neat. Nice and low profile, and it clicks up and down fairly nice. So if you get a scope up there, it's not going to intrude. If your scope goes down, maybe a BB hits it out or you run out of batteries, just take it off there and you can flip up this sight. Pretty neat. Charging handle is non-functional, doesn't do anything. You actually have to open the dust cover with your finger, which is better because uh, one of the, some of the blowback guns you do, you fire it, the dust cover opens, you put it back in your bag and you can get all sorts of stuff in there. Dust, pine needles, grass, sand, all sorts of stuff. I prefer that the dust cover is closed. Your hop-up wheel is also situated inside there, and g and does some of the best hop units I've seen in airsoft guns. If I buy something like a GMP, First thing I do is get a G and G hot rubber in there, maybe a Magdo blue hot rubber, but certainly the G and G hop up unit uh, goes in there. Great unit. It's really stiff, which I really like. You can make tiny little adjustments, really nice, and you can get your hop up set perfectly. Uh, the gun comes with a 450 round magazine, slightly longer than a normal magazine, which is really cool if it's your first gun and all you've got is a high cap. You get plenty of rounds to go out there and skirmish with. Really cool. Very high quality metal on these. Uh, superb. It's also got real steel markings on it, which is unusual for g and Moving on to the metal body, it's pretty much a replica, a semi-replica of the 416, M416, so you guys all know that, or uh, Battlefield 3, games like that. Uh, although it's been sprayed over, you can still see the little red markings on there with your semi and full auto engagements, and you've also got the crossed out bullet for your safe. Uh, yeah, there's no battery in this gun, so I have no qualms with it being off safety, but we'll click it on there. You've also got G&G trades on the side here. Some of, that'll, some of your Mil 7 type guys and regular players will be put off by that, but it's actually pretty cool. It's engraved in there, so it's a nice neat trademark, and of course you can spray over it as well. The res rail is of course metal, like the rest of the bottom receiver and top receiver. It's nice, it's kind of reminiscent again of the 416, but it's not the same, it doesn't run uh, quite the same as the 4161. One. It's unique to G&G, &G, but it's nice and light. Actually, it's about as light as a plastic one, with it being metal. Uh, a lot of you guys requested that G&G &G do a, a metal one of these for a slightly higher cost than the plastic one, just to get a metal gun, and they certainly have delivered. This is a really sturdy gun, there's no shakes and rattles, even the stock is solid, which is pretty neat. You got, this is a long barrel version, and the cool thing about this is it's got a, a 14 millimeter counterclockwise, which means I can put silencers and all sorts of things on there, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to demonstrate that quickly. Right, I've got 1.5 millimeter Allen key. And there's a little grub screw on the flash headers. Guys, make sure you loosen this off before you take it off, or you're going to damage the thread on it. Uh, I'm going to take it out about halfway, which is all you need to do. And of course, there'll be some Loctite on here with it being G&G, so quick twist to break that off, and off it comes. Simple as that. And we can put our Mad Bill tracer unit on, which we're going to use for the shooting test. This thing is awesome. It worked out really well with the AUG high cycle, and I've had it out in a few skirmishes as well. It's a really neat bit of kit. The review of this will be coming up soon, and you'll get some gameplay footage. It's actually dirty from the last time I skirmished with it. Bad Jerry, all the way from Anzio. It's been in that kit bag for at least a week. All right, let's screw this on. 
Very simple thread. Nothing complicated at all. Says the guy who's struggling to put on. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. All right, we're good. Really simple thread. You get all sorts of things on here, different flash hiders, different silencers, uh, Nevesky's sound amplifiers, lots of things. And of course, with it being an M4, you can also put other things on, like this vertical grip, which I'll demonstrate as well. This one's the aluminium version um, from Tango Down. Need a bit of kit. Just fits on there like so, and you can tighten it up. Just, you can pimp up your M4 however you like. There's many options. You can get a scope on there as well. And already, it looks pretty badass with just a few different upgrades. Silencer, foregrip, you can get emags in there, you can change the grip out, the stock out. Before you know it, you've got something that's highly customizable. Oh yeah, I've noticed as well, 416 style grip, of course, g, &G. Uh, This is a really nice little gun. Lightweight, great for a beginner. So let's get it out on the range and see how it stacks against the competition. Okay, as of all our guns that we have in uh, Epic Airsoft HD, we're on a 30 meter range. Now, a lot of you guys say, oh, the guns aren't accurate, they're not hitting the bullseye. They don't need to hit the bullseye. All we're looking at is the grouping, which is how close the BBs are together when they hit the target. I'm aiming roughly for the center. I'm not aiming directly for the bullseye. Uh, so that grouping test is telling us how accurate it is over that distance. Closer the spread, the better. Wider, the worse off. So, like I said, nice neat grouping, that's what we're looking at. And uh, this uh, g, g is a lot to live up to with the guns that we've tested before. First off, we're going to use 0.3 gram BBs on semi-auto. I'm going to fire about 10 or 12 shots down range and see how it does, and then we'll switch to full auto. All right, let's go for it. All right, that was about 12 shots. We'll move on to full auto now. Okay, we're now moving on to the full auto test. Now, just to clarify, the reason we use the vice is we want to el eliminate any human element. I saw you guys out there and going, oh, what the hell is this guy doing using the vice? Shouldn't he be shooting from standing? No, we're trying to benchmark them against the competition. So this is the only secure way to do it. Also, we're indoors, so there's no crosswinds. Everything is controlled as it possibly could be. The 7.4 volt light one here. g, &G recommend a 9.6 volt NIM battery, which will up the rate of fire. Uh, won't be as uh, nice on the trigger pull, but we're getting, we're getting pretty decent with the LiPo. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead now and we'll fire about three bursts of about 10 rounds each. Let's have a look at what I can do at the target. Let's go for it. Okay, let's have a closer look at those. Okay, let's have a look at those targets. It looked like it done pretty well from where I was. Uh, slow moving 0.3 gram BBs. Alright, this gun shoots about 330 FPS, which is about legal limit there with uh, the UK. But look at that, that is a really solid grouping. And I say some guns are really good, but this is awesome. Look at that, that is really nice and neat here. A couple of flyers down this end, but that there, if you're aiming for someone's chest, you are not going to miss. That is nice and sweet. 30 meter range, that is really good. If you push this 40, 50 meters out, it's still gonna be excellent. That's a nice gripping. All right, we moved on to full auto, and it actually looks like on full auto, again, yeah, again, we've got a nicer gripping. Look at that, it's just shredded the target there. It's very rare to see a gun that performs as well on full auto. Low rate of fire on there with a 7.4 volt, but we can maybe revisit this again with a 9.6, but that is, that is really good. Look at that cluster. Right about 40 meters, that's gonna be a nice head size target. And that's really good. Very impressed with this gun. Something that costs 200 pounds, this full metal, and it's already comes that you carry illegal in the UK. It's a really nice, neat package to get. Uh, the gun doesn't come with a battery or a charger, but again, if you invest in a really good one, that's what you want to do. You want your kit to last. Plenty of customizable options on this, and of course, a little bit more sturdy than the plastic version that's available uh, through Airsoft World. But uh, you can check this gun out in the links in the description below. Also, you can check out the attachments on there as well. We'll put the links in there for you too. Uh, you can also check out the plastic version that we did before, which is the g, &G Raider L and Tan, which is pretty neat. Uh, you can check out one of these in action. Scout the Doggies videos by clicking on that annotation. And you can also see last week's gun as well by clicking on this one. Awesome piece of kit, guys. 
Again, we'll review a lot like this in the future, so don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook too, you can see what we get up to, and uh, you can also see some sneaky previews and sneaky shots that we get out of the guns before we actually release them for review. So guys, we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.